friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, celebrating 40 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Today, Andrew illustrates that knowing God is not just for the privileged, not just for those who found a formula. Knowing God is for everyone. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm nearing the end of my fourth week talking about knowing God. And I tell you, this is a powerful, powerful subject. This is really what everything is about. Knowing God is what makes everything else work. Knowing God equals success. It equals victory. And uh, I've just shared a lot of things about it. The last few days, we've, we've already established that this is the goal of salvation. This is what produces the fullness of God in us. We've established that you can't know God through just your physical, natural means, your five senses or your intellect. You have to contact Him by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I've established all that. And so then I was establishing that you have to take the Word of God. The Word is how we get knowledge of God. You know, if all you do is just sit out on a hill someplace and say, Oh, God, reveal yourself to me. I believe that the Lord does respond to prayers like that, but He will ultimately respond and lead you to the Word of God or lead you to someone who knows the Word of God. I, I believe that. You know, the Lord didn't give authority to angels to preach the gospel. There are scriptural accounts in the Acts chapter 10, where a man named Cornelius was praying and seeking to know God. He wasn't a Jew, and this is back at the beginning of the church age. He was separated from the promises of God, but he wanted to know God. And God sent an angel, but the angel didn't preach to him and tell him the gospel, although I'm sure he knew it. But see, the authority to preach the gospel was given to men. And so the angel told Cornelius to send to Joppa and bring Peter there, and Peter preached the gospel to him. Ultimately, the Word of God is how people get born again. The Word of God is how we get changed. It's how God reveals Himself to us. And the Lord might do something special on occasion. It's not going to be consistent. It's not going to be anything that you can guarantee is going to be available to every person. But the Word of God and the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to reveal the Word is available to everyone. And everything else that God does, if you want to truly know God, it's not just through sitting in your home and uh, sitting there and waiting on some epiphany to happen and you to have some revelation. You need to get into the Word of God. God is going to do everything to put you into the Word of God. There's some of you that probably disagree with that. But you know what? I bet you that you don't have the results that I'm getting. And I'm not saying that in an arrogant way, trying to put you down, but I'm saying that I know the people who are really prospering in the things of God and are seeing God move in their life in them and through them to other people are people who are, uh, have knowledge of God consistent with the Word of God. People that sit at home and just think, well, I know God in my own way are the ones that we call granola Christians. Fruits, flakes, and nuts. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So you need to know the Word of God. You know, let me just, I've already said this as I was discussing the last couple of days about how that the Word of God reveals God to us and that's how we get to know Him. I've tried to emphasize that it's not just the Word in a legalistic, dogmatic, uh, you know, just a technical way but it needs to be inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you get the spirit of the Word. I use that verse over in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, that we have been made able ministers of the Spirit and not the letter of the law because the Spirit is what gives life. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And so I've already used that verse. You've got to merge the Spirit and the Word together. You really can't separate them, but for the purpose of discussion, I first of all emphasize that it's the Word that grants us the understanding and the knowledge of God, and then the Holy Spirit quickens it. I just want to emphasize some things that Jesus said about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, this is something that He spoke to His disciples the night before His crucifixion. 
he was, this was some of his very last minute instructions. He was leaving, and so it'd be the same as if, you know, I knew that I was going to be leaving the earth tomorrow, and if I called all of our Bible college students together, and if it was the last time I ever had to speak to them, just by virtue of the uh, situation, it would have to be something really important. I wouldn't just sit there and talk trivial things. It, it was going to be my last instruction to him. And so Jesus was emphasizing things and throughout his last discourse to his disciples in John 14, 15, and 16, he kept emphasizing over and over and over the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit would bring them into all truth. Here's one of the things he said in John chapter 14, verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Man, that's a powerful scripture. He will teach you all things. Well, certainly one of those all things that we need to know is what God is like and how we can know him. Reveal the ways of God. Teach us the things of God. And this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sent to teach us and to lead us into all truth and bring all things to our remembrance. You know, this is something that I see often in people that God has spoken to them and given them revelation, but they just take it, they apply it to the situation they're in, they get over their crisis, and then they go their way and they forget the things of God. If we just had everything that God has spoken to us current and working on the inside of us, what a difference that would make. You know, just recently I taught, and I've got a brand new book out entitled uh, The Keys, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. And that's what that whole series was about. It was about how keeping everything fresh, remembering and keeping these things alive on the inside of us and not letting there be an expiration date to what God has shown you. And this is the job of the Holy Spirit is to teach us, lead us into all truth, and bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever Jesus has spoken unto us. So you need the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to show you and reveal things unto you. Uh, over in chapter 15, this is John chapter 15, and in verse 26 it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth who, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. The word testify here is just saying that he will reveal Jesus. He will tell us the ways of Jesus. Again, this is another emphasis or another um, evidence that the Holy Spirit is given to reveal Jesus unto us. And this is what we started this series talking about. If you'll remember in Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, the Apostle Paul said, I count everything but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. And he said that he wanted to know this, he wanted to know God, and he said here that he counted everything but loss so that he just might know him. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is to testify of Jesus, to reveal him. And so if we are going to prosper in knowing God, you've got to know the Word under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You need the quickening ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Jesus went on to say, this is the same discourse, the same night before His crucifixion, John chapter 16, and in verse uh, 7, He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. The word expedient here means it's to your advantage. It's beneficial. You're better off if he goes away. This is Jesus saying, talking. And he had just told his disciples that he was going to be taken from them, that they weren't going to have him around him. Because it, in the previous verse, in verse 6, he says, But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. They were sad to hear Jesus talking about the fact that he was going to leave them. They loved him. They knew he was the Son of God. And here he was talking about leaving, and they were sad. And he says, but I tell you the truth, it's expedient. It's to your advantage that I go away. You know, if you would have been one of the disciples of Jesus, and if you had traveled with him for three and a half years, seen him walk on water 
calm the storms, raise the dead, cast out devils, open up blind eyes, make the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, had the lunatic delivered, the lame walk. If you had done all of these things, and if you saw Jesus manifesting God this way, and then he told you, I'm leaving, you probably would have been sorry too. And then when he says, it's actually to your advantage if I leave, you would probably be thinking, how does it get any better than this? How could it be better for you not to be here? And he goes on, look at this. This is in John 16, 7. He says, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And the comforter, over in the first verse that we read today, over in John 14, 26, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. So when he says, it's expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying that having the Holy Spirit inside of us is better than having Jesus in his physical body with us. Now, you know what? Most people probably wouldn't agree with that. If you're in church and if you read verses and stuff, people will sit there and put on their best religious face and say, yes, amen, and nod their head. But in a practical, everyday situation, if you were in a crisis, most of you would love to have Jesus in his physical body standing right there. You would long to have that. And yet Jesus himself said it's actually better to have the Holy Spirit with you. And there's multiple reasons for it. Matter of fact, some of them are given in just the next few verses, but I've got an entire teaching on that, a whole album, five-part album on, on the positive ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go into that. But one of the reasons that the Holy Spirit is better, it's better to have the ministry of the Holy Spirit than it is to have the physical, bodily presence of Jesus with us is because the Holy Spirit illuminates us on the inside and helps us to walk by faith like what I was teaching last week. That you, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to contact God in the spirit. How is it that you get beyond your five senses? If all you had was the physical body of Jesus there, that would not help you to overcome the limitations of just being physically minded. Now, again, I'm not trying to minimize the physical presence of Jesus when he was here on this earth. He represented God perfectly. But I'm saying that the Holy Spirit inside of us will reveal Jesus to us. We can actually contact and know God through the Holy Spirit in a way that you could never contact God just in your five senses. So it's actually better to have the quickening power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us revealing God unto us. Let me take another scripture that is saying the same thing. This is the Apostle Paul speaking over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And in verse 9 it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And most people just stop right there. Put a period, end of thought, end of truth, and they just say, yes, we just can't know the things of God. The ways of God are higher than our ways. And uh, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we just can't know the things of God. That's what this verse is saying. It's actually a quotation from the Old Testament saying, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That is a Bible truth. But it is an Old Testament truth. Bible truth, before people got born again, before they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and before the quickening power of the Holy Spirit came into people's lives. And to prove it, if you just keep reading in verse 10, this is the very next verse, it says, but God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Reveal what? The things that in verse 9 it says you can't see with your eye nor hear with your ear nor enter into your heart the things that God has prepared for them that love us. You can't know these things in just a physical, natural way. This is exactly the point that the Apostle Paul was making in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and chapter 5. A matter of fact, if you notice, I'm over here in the book to the Corinthians. This was the first letter he wrote to them. It's a common theme that he had to the Corinthian uh, people. 
He is saying the same thing. He's not saying that we can't know God. He's just saying you can't know God with nothing but your peanut brain. You can't just intellectually come to know Him. You can't just discern Him in an audible or visible way. You have to know Him by the Spirit. And the next verse says, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. This isn't saying that, you know, as it was in the Old Testament, that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's still true if you were only looking at us as physical, natural human beings. Just as a normal person, I don't have any edge over a person under the old covenant. If you were just talking about my physical, emotional, natural part of me, but as a New Testament born-again believer, I now am recreated in the image of God. And when you add to that, that the Holy Spirit is sent to teach us all things and lead us into all truth and bring to our remembrance all things whatsoever God has spoken unto us, then it is not true if you incorporate my born-again spirit that knows all things and has been renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, Colossians 3.10, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, down here in this same chapter, that we have the mind of Christ. If you include my born-again spirit and then the quickening ministry of the Holy Spirit that is sent to testify of Jesus and reveal these things, then it's untrue to say that I just can't know the things of God, that his ways are higher than my ways. His ways are higher than my natural ways, but I am not only natural. There is a part of me that has been born again and has been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And on the inside of me, I am wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. And because of it, I can know God. That's what he just goes on to say. He keeps saying this over and over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? In other words, none of us really know what another person is thinking. That person is the only person the spirit of the man inside of them is the only one that truly knows what's going on. And he says, even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. In the same way that nobody knows another person as well as that person knows themselves, nobody knows God as well as the spirit of God, the spirit that indwells God. And God has given us that spirit he can reveal God to us. We're talking about knowing God. And this is how you know God. In the next verse, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Not only know about God, but know Him. God has literally imparted His spirit unto us to reveal Himself unto us. Man, that's powerful. In verse 13, it says, Which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom speaketh, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is the exact point I made over and over and over last week when I was teaching that you can't discern spiritual things by natural means. You have to compare spiritual with spiritual. And this is what he's saying, that we are now coming to through the in, indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and the enlightenment that He gives us, our spirit is able to relate to God's spirit, and we are able to know Him. And then he says in verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Well, that's powerful. And so... What I've been trying to get across on today's program is the last couple of days I was emphasizing how we've got to know the Word of God because that is how God revealed Himself unto us. But all of these scriptures I've used today are saying that with your natural mind, you can't understand the Word of God. You know, there's probably people watching this program. I've heard this often, and people say the Bible is just so hard to understand. That's because it's not written to your head. It's written to your heart. The Bible isn't intended to just intellectually convince you. It is written to your heart, and it takes the Holy Spirit to, in a sense, uh, interpret or uh, release the power that's in the Word. It has to be under inspiration coming into your heart that the Word of God releases its potential. 
And so when people say that the Word of God is so hard to understand, that's because they're reading it like a book and they're just trying to figure it out intellectually. If you would read the Word and say, God, I want you to speak to me. If these things are true, then speak to me. Give me revelation. Help me to understand in my heart. And if you'll do that, I guarantee you, God will move you. God will speak to you. It may not be in an audible voice, but it'll be so loud, it'll be so strong, you will think nearly that it's an audible voice. You can get to where living in the Spirit is more real than hearing and moving in the physical realm. And that's what all of these verses are talking about. And so I've been trying to say that it's the Word of God, yes, but it's quickened by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is given specifically to reveal Jesus unto us. And let me just say some things real quickly. I know that there's people watching this program who, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, you just take for granted that you have everything and all that there is of the Holy Spirit and that you've already got it. But in the Bible, and I haven't got time to teach on this, we're drawing to the end of the program, but Jesus' disciples believed that he was the Lord, that he was risen from the dead. They confessed him as Lord, which is what Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says to do, and if you do it, you're saved. So they were saved, and yet Jesus told them, don't go anywhere, don't preach, don't do anything until you receive power from on high. And they had a separate experience, separate from their born-again experience where they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Right in John chapter 14, one of the verses, one of the chapters that I was using today, Jesus told his disciples that the Holy Spirit has been with you, but he shall be in you. I believe that every person who gets born again certainly has the ministry of the Holy Spirit involved in their life, but there's a difference in having the Holy Spirit with you and then in you. And so I'm saying all of this to say that there's many people that just think, well, I've got the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit. Well, certainly we have access to the Holy Spirit in some ways, but there is a separate experience where you receive power. On the day of Pentecost, when the disciples obeyed the Lord and tarried and the Holy Spirit came, man, there was a powerful demonstration and they spoke with other tongues. And I know that there's many people that question this and that you've been taught against it, and I haven't got time to teach on it. That's not my purpose in trying to teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. But I feel like I'd be remiss to mention this to you, to get you stirred up, and then not tell you that there is a separate experience from being born again to where the power of the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And along with that is included. It's not limited to, but it includes speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is one of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. Some people think it's passed away, and I hadn't got time to deal with that, but I'm telling you, I speak in tongues. And it works, and I would not have seen the manifestation of God's power in my life if I didn't speak in tongues. So as we talk about this, let me just say that if you haven't received this second experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, you need it. I really believe that. So I'd like to encourage you to not only get the materials that we're offering, but when you call in also, ask someone just to pray with you or explain to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, if you receive that, it's gonna make a huge difference. It will help you to know God. So please listen as our announcer gives you some information about our phone number, about how to get these materials, Remember that next week is going to be the conclusion of this teaching on knowing God. So please call or write today and then join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's five-part teaching titled Knowing God was captured live at a recent gospel truth seminar. It's available in a CD or DVD album for a gift of 16 pounds or more. For the CD album, ask for number T1058 or request the DVD series T3203. You can also get Andrew's teachings as seen on TV by asking for DVD album number T1058 when you send a gift of 16 pounds or more. The fourth teaching in the audio CD album, Knowing God Through the Word, is also available for a donation. We encourage everyone to send a gift, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this fourth CD free of charge. 
Request teaching number TK144 when you write or call, and we'll be pleased to send it to you. I know that many of you have been stirred up today, and boy, you just need this revelation. You know, the Bible says, Luke 24, 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I'd like to offer to you our helpline, not only to get these materials that we're advertising, they will help, but also to just offer you prayer. We have some awesome people that know God. They know how to release the power of God, and they can pray with you, and they can pray Luke 24, 45, that God would open up your understanding that you might understand the scriptures. So we have that phone number on the screen in front of you. I encourage you to call and get the materials, but also receive prayer. Our web address is awme.net. You can order ministry materials online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Or you can use your credit card to order by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. Again, that's 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Helpline hours extend from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If you prefer to write us, our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He will be in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the 25th Annual U.S. Ministers Conference, September 29th through October 3rd. He'll also be in Gosforth, Newcastle upon Tyne in the U.K. on October 18th through the 19th and in Buxton, England for the annual AWME Ministers Conference, October 20th through the 22nd. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. I'd like to encourage you to go to our website and check out the Andrew Womack Living Commentary. You know, this is a Bible program where you actually get three different versions of the Bible, about four different commentaries, mine being one of them. And I have comments on about 15,000 verses in the Bible, and it's really, really good. I mean, God has used these comments to bless me. I, I think it's a tremendous thing. And the reason we call it a living commentary is because it's an ongoing process. I'm still writing anywhere from 100 to 200 to sometimes 500 verses per month, and you get updates on a monthly basis. So you can check out a sample of this on our website. The address is right there. So please uh, check this out today. I have a wealth of information on the subject of knowing God, and one of the best ways I have of sharing this with you is through our website. We have hundreds of my teachings that are free downloads to you that you can put right on an iPod, free downloads. We have eight years worth of television, about 11 years worth of radio. We've got books. I've got a commentary, a living commentary that is really I believe it's going to be a tremendous blessing to people. So please check it out. We have that web address on your screen. And please join us on the web today.